The heart wants what it wants. The prevailing desire of our heart governs the direction of our life. Stop. Before we can change direction, we must stop. The Gospel promises us a change of heart, a gift from God, replacing a heart of stone for a heart of flesh. Standing still long enough for the light of the Gospel to shine in all those dark corners with the desires that govern us is difficult and painful. Change always is. We fear loss, loss of status, loss of control, loss of comfort, losing our little collection of goodies, losing our cherished independent sovereignty, and loss of those relationships that help us to sustain all our illusions. Many of us have been forced into the stop mode over the past many months, and we are perhaps now ready. This is a good time for each one of us to take our temperature. Is my heart humble or prideful? Do I have a believing heart, or have I manipulated the gospel message to align with my own desires? Does the direction of my life reflect love of God and love of neighbor? Have I remained open and teachable towards that obedient heart? The call to a change of heart, the call to repentance, is not a call to shame and guilt. Guilt and shame are mostly unhelpful, and the protest of the false self, as it is shocked by its own limits, the defences of a little man who wants to be a big man. First comes love. God leads by compassion towards the soul, never by condemnation. If God would relate to us by severity and punitiveness, God would only be giving us permission to do the same. God's work is always towards healing and harmony. Does my own life work promote this healing and harmony? Our Franciscan tradition calls us to effective meditation, to contemplation, moving us from passive observers to active participation in the life of Jesus, from the crib at Greccio, along the way of the cross, and into the very five wounds of the crucified Christ. This ultimate violence and brutality inflicted on Jesus is taken into the body of the little poverello from Assisi. Francis then shows us, by way of imitation, the way of Jesus, moving beyond the fixation of violence in the event, without succumbing to morbid self-absorption or self-glorification as victim, Francis journeys down the mountain of Laverna to work with the lepers and to seek out those in needs. The circle of violence and retaliation is broken. The passion of Jesus is now read in the flesh of Francis, a new heart as an invitation to promote healing and harmony. Have I wandered too long, the maze of the dead looking for resurrection and new life? What great joy to be given this opportunity to take another look and to come to the second gaze. The resurrection is not to be found in the empty tomb, but among the living. This is the when and the where of the kingdom of God. The Lord grant you peace.